This is a full set of Mikey full frame cinema lenses from China, and this is a set of Canon CNE primes made in Japan. And today we're going to see how these two very different lens kits compare and see if these Canon cinema primes are worth $15,000 more than these Mikey lenses. But first a quick disclaimer, Mikey sent these lenses in for a review, but they are not sponsoring this video. This video is however supported by those of you who have purchased my camera guides and LUTs. Check the link in the description to learn more and thank you guys so much for the support. There have been so many budget cinema lenses coming out of China and other countries recently and I've been dying to see how they compare to kind of the old guard lenses from Canon, Zeiss, and others. And thanks to my good friend Colin, I finally had a chance to try these Canon primes and put them up against one of these budget sets. So let's talk about these two different sets of lenses then we'll get into the image quality differences and I found some really interesting stuff that I can't wait to share with you. So let's start with the Mikey lens set. I have five lenses including the 24, 35, 50, 85, and 105 millimeter. In the future, there will also be a 16 and 135 millimeter version available. On the Canon side, we're going to be looking at the 24, 35, 50, 85 and 135. Now there are other focal lengths available and a whole bunch of zooms from Canon, but these are the lenses that I figured would be good to compare against the Mikey since they're similar in focal length. Aperture wise, we're looking at T21 for all of the Mikey lenses. And on the Canon side, we have a maximum aperture range of T1.3 up to 2.2. All of these lenses have 11 aperture blades for nice round bokeh. And while the weight is almost identical across all of these lenses, the size is not. The Canon lenses have a maximum front diameter of 114 millimeters, whereas we're looking at 85 for the Mikey lenses. So significantly smaller when you look at them side by side, but the weight is about the same, which is crazy. Dimensions are almost identical across each set independently as well. So your focus ring, aperture ring are all going to perfectly line up from lens to lens, as well as the length of the lenses with exception to a few lenses on the Canon side. But the Mikey set is exactly the same across the board. Focus and iris markings are shown on both sides of the Canon lenses, but only on the smart side on the Mikey lenses. Another difference is on the Canon lenses, you can be right behind the camera and still be able to read your markings for focus and iris. However, on the Mikey lenses, you do have to kind of look on the side of the lens to be able to read them. When it comes to the feel of these lenses, the Mikeys and the Canons both feel fantastic. So I wouldn't say that one feels so much better than the other. You're gonna be happy with either of these when it comes to operation. And then we have what comes in the box. With the Mikey lenses, you're going to get the lens itself, a really nice lens cap with the focal length and specs printed on top, a lens support bracket that can be bolted onto the lens, tools to do that, and a set of screws for removing the mount, as well as a set of shims. This allows you to adjust the back focus if needed. And finally, we have mounts. For the Canon primes, we're looking at EF mount, and then on the Mikey lenses, you have several different mounts to choose from. You're also able to swap mounts on the Mikey lenses, which is fantastic. One really cool feature with the Canon lenses is that they'll actually communicate with the camera. So you can actually read your iris setting as you're turning the iris ring, which is really nice to have. Finally, we have the price. This set of five lenses from Canon will set you back just over $20,000. In contrast, these five lenses from Mikey are a quarter of that or around $5,000 or roughly $1,000 per lens. With that crazy price difference, let's get into the image quality differences between these lenses, starting with sharpness. When comparing the 24 millimeter lenses, Canon here is the clear winner. Jumping up to the 35 millimeter, Canon is slightly sharper in the center, but the Mikey lenses perform better in the corners. The 50 millimeters are very very close with Mikey slightly pulling ahead, especially in the corners. And we have a similar story with the 85 millimeter. Close call in the center, but the Mikey is taking the lead in the corners. Next up, we have breathing. Comparing the two 24 mils, I would say it's about a wash between the two. On the 35 millimeter, the Mikey is the clear winner here. 50 millimeter, we're looking at another wash between the two. And on the 85 millimeter, Mikey again takes a clear win. This one was pretty surprising, but overall, Mikey lenses seem to be outperforming the Canon lenses when it comes to breathing. Breathing. Next up, we have distortion, and I'm not even going to show you the test because they were pretty much identical lens to lens, which is really interesting to see. So no difference there. Then we have vignetting. At T21, the Canon lenses outperform the Mikey slightly at 24 and 35, as you can see from this waveform. The flatter that curve is on the waveform, 
the better the vignetting performance. At 50 and 85, however, there was no competition. The Canon lenses performed incredibly well here. Next up, we have chromatic aberration. Now, all of these tests are done at T2.1 so that we can keep things nice and even between these two different sets of lenses. I use the vector scope to be able to read that magenta and green shift you get before and after your focus on lenses that struggle with chromatic aberration. And for the 24 millimeter, the Mikey wins here since we can see less saturation and color on either side of focus. Same story when we move up to the 35 millimeter, the Mikey lens is better. And then when we look at the 50 millimeter, we have a tie and the same is true of the 85 millimeter, another tie. And that takes us into the subjective world of bokeh. So let's take a look at the 24 millimeter lenses, starting with the Mikey. You'll notice we have some pretty strong red chromatic aberration with slight onion ring. When moving the bokeh balls to the corner, you'll notice that we're going to see some cutting. And then on the Canon 24 millimeter, we have very strong green chromatic aberration. And as bokeh moves to the edges of the frame, we get shrinking and cutting outside of the center of frame with very sharp top and bottom bokeh. Next up, we have the Mikey 35 millimeter. Again, sharp red chromatic aberration, cutting in the corners and very slight onion ringing. On the Canon 35, we have slight green chromatic aberration rings, very strong cutting and cat's eye and shrinking outside of the center. Moving on to the 50 millimeter Mikey, we have really nice smooth bokeh here. And for once we have some low bokeh chromatic aberration and slight cuttings in the corner. Moving on to the Canon 50 millimeter, we have sharper green chromatic aberration and very strong cat's eye cutting and shrinking in the corners. If you have bokeh moving around your frame, it almost looks like small football spinning as you pan and tilt the camera. Moving on to the Mikey 85 millimeter, we have slight green chromatic aberration and cutting and cat's eye in the corner and on the Canon 85, similar to the Mikey, but with football cat's eye, especially on the left and right edges of the frame. And while these next two lenses aren't the exact same focal length, 105 for the Mikey and 135 for the Canon, I went ahead and tested them anyway. And we have very smooth bokeh with some footballing on the Mikey 105. And things are very smooth on the Canon 135 with strong cutting and cat's eye in the edges. Next up, we have flaring. And in the 24 millimeter Mikey, we have a really nice neutral soft glow. Canon is a little more controlled, but it has a secondary flare spot. And there's a similar story on the 35 millimeters from both companies. On the 50 millimeter, Mikey starts to show a second flare with a ring around it. And the Canon has a ring around the primary flare with a strong green secondary flare. Moving on to the 85 millimeter, the Mikey gets a purple fringe with a warm glow at the edges of the frame and similar results on the Canon, but with a stronger secondary ring. The Mikey 105 and Canon 135 are similar purple flares with blue and purple secondary flares. Then we have have color and kind of skin or human test. So here are each of the lenses from each company, starting with the 24 millimeter, and we'll move on up to the 85 eventually. But as you can see, both look good, and you can definitely start to see something that Canon nailed with their lenses, and that is color consistency. If I take all of the Mikey shots and put them side by side, the 24, 35, and 85 millimeter, you'll see there is a difference in color. If we do the same thing, but with the Canon lenses, you'll notice that color is very consistent across the range. And that is why I think these lenses are four times the cost. Their coatings are very, very finely controlled. Whereas these lenses from Mikey, there's a little less finesse there. So if you want lenses to look identical when switching focal lengths when it comes to color the Canon lenses are a fantastic tool, whether that be a multicam shoot that you're working on or just filming the same thing in the same lighting and you wanna switch out lenses and not have any kind of color casts. Of course, you can work around this, but that's more work, that's more time, and at the end of the day, that's more money. That said, looking at all of the tests I did with these, I was amazed at how well these Mikey lenses held up. I really like the image quality coming off of them and actually prefer them in many ways over these Canon lenses. Now, obviously these lenses from Canon are much faster, but that also is going to give you more artifacting because all of the tests we looked at were at T21 with exception to the bokeh test. So be prepared for even worse performance when you open these lenses all the way up. So if you're looking for a really strong set of prime lenses that don't cost $20,000 and you're okay with a little bit of color differences between them, you're not gonna be able to beat these things for the money in my opinion. So that's gonna wrap up this video. I thought it was really interesting. I hope you did too. Stay tuned for more videos on lenses, cameras, and other crazy video rig builds and things here on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.